I am Kandip Kaur and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today in this video we are going to continue with a series that we have started previously guessing the output but this video is specially dedicated to questions related to promises. And also there is a giveaway at the end of this video so make sure that you watch till the end and get your giveaway. So let's start the video but before that you know the drill make sure to hit the subscribe button and like button at the end if you like the content and if you like the questions so let's go okay so here's our first question where we have a variable first promise which is of type promise it has a response and a reject and we have kept it uh, kept its response in set timeout and we have kept 500 millisecond and this is the response that is one and for the second promise we have same thing we have kept it in set timeout for 100 milliseconds and the response is 2. Finally we have kept both of these promises in promise dot race and we have resolved it and finally we are logging the response. So what do you think is going to be the output of, question, uh, output of this question? Feel free to pause this video, crack it down and let me know in the comment section if you cracked it down successfully. Otherwise we'll continue with this video. So uh, if I run this will get two. Why? Because promise dot raise resolves and rejects the first promise in this array that's been passed to promise dot raise that first resolves and rejects. So if first promise resolves first, it'll console log the first promise and if second promise resolves first, it'll give you the second promise first. So since we have kept uh, second promise for less number of milliseconds and first promise for 500 milliseconds the second promise will resolve first and eventually you will get to see 2 as a console log result for line 9. So I hope this question is clear let's move on to the second one. Okay so here's your question number 2 where we have this async function get data and it is returning back a promise uh, when that promise is resolved and it has I made it. And currently you are just calling it on line 5 and then you are console logging the data. So what is going to be the data in this case? Feel free to pause this video and try to fix it. It is very very important that you try to fix it by yourself. And if you are not successful then you can continue with this video. So let's run this and check what's the answer. It's a pending promise. Why? Because async function will always return a promise. And currently the promise that we are returning hasn't been resolved yet. It is still in await, in waiting condition. So when you will call this get data, the, the, the work of get data is to uh, or async function is to return a promise which is not re yet resolved. So when you will call get data, it will return you the pending promise which you are logging here on line 6. And by the way, if you actually want to get this, what is uh, what what will you get after the promise is resolved then you can uh, put it like something like this um, like you can put it in a promises as well so when that promise is resolved you'll call this and you'll get I made it so you can keep it like that as well I hope this question is clear let's move on to the third one okay so here's our third question where we have this function uh, which is an error function promise dot resolve and in the promise dot resolve we have I have resolved and, and here is our first function uh, which contains my promise that we have declared on line 2 and we have kept it in a promise and when that's resolved you will console log the response finally you will console log this and uh, on line 9 you have an async function you have await and then you will console log second and finally you are just calling first function and second function so what is going to be the output of this again pause this video try to crack this down by yourself so let's run this so we have got these four outputs so what is exactly happening here on line 5 we have kept it in a promise by using dot then and on line 10 we have kept it in promise by using async away so although they do the same purpose that they wait for certain execution, certain promise to resolve and then they will log the response, they will log whatever the output of that response is, right? So they do basically the same thing, but they do it differently. So using dot then, what you do is you basically put that code aside and when the, when the interpreter see that the call stack is now empty, it will log whatever the response of that promise was 
right but in await what it does it it basically halts the execution it won't go to line 11 until and unless this promise resolves so what is happening here when you will call first function it will keep since we are using dot then to resolve a promise it will keep this code aside but will continue running the other code so it will move to line 6 which is a uh, console log second so you will get console log second and by the time you console log second the co uh, this promise must have been resolved and now you got I have resolved this from here and on here you can see I have resolved and then finally when you will call second function you will go to line 10 which is async await so it will particularly halt the execution it won't go to line 11 till this promise resolves so once this promise resolves and you get i have resolved as a response it will get console here and finally on line 11 you will get second and it get console here i hope this question is clear very very important question to know the understand how actually dot then an async await function works and how differently they works Right, so I hope this is clear. Let's move on to the question number four. Okay, so here's your question number four where we are console logging five in promise.resolve. So what is going to be the answer for this console log statement? Feel free to pause this video. Try to fix this by yourself first. Okay, so if I run this, I'll get promise five. So what exactly is happening here? So you can pass anything in promise.resolve. It could be a promise or it could be any known promise value as well. So the return type for promise.resolve is always promise. So you will always see promise here. But here you will get either if, if that value is a known promise, which in our case is 5, which is simple numeric value, you will see that value here. But if that value is a promise here, then you will see the response or the resolved value of that promise after this promise here so you can pass anything basically in here promise or non promise based on whatever you are passing you will get here i hope this question is also clear let's move on to the fifth one okay so here's your question number five which is a bit complicated but yeah very very important to understand how async await actually works so uh, you ha basically have a generator here which is by the name of range uh, which has a start and an end so basically you are just passing uh, as you can see on line 8 you are just passing the range as a start and the end value and it will generate the value between the start and end for you so this is basically this function is doing and here on line 7 you have again this async function which is uh, calling this range and starting from 1 it is going till 3 so it will create a range for you and uh, we have saved that range in gen in, in a variable called gen and then we are uh, looping over gen and we are console logging item so this is the basics of this question so now feel free to pause this video try to fix it by yourself with explanation and if you are not successful then we'll continue with this video so let's try to run this so we get 1, 2 and 3. So what exactly is happening here? This is the range as I've already told you. This is the async function, right? So async function always returns a promise object. So here you are just looping over this range and you are yielding the promise. So async function will always give you promise object. So what exactly are you going to get? So you, you will going to get something like promise 1 as we have already seen in our previous uh, question as well. Promise 3, something like this. So in generator, like in, in this gen variable, when you call this function, you'll get something like this. And here, when you will go here, you are using await actually here. So await will halt the execution till that promise is resolved. So gen will first, you'll get promise one. It will await till this promise is resolved. And once this promise is resolved, you will get console log item, which has been become to one now because now the promise is resolved. Similarly, for second, you will get promise two and it will await till that promise is resolved and you will get two. And finally, for promise three, you will get three. So you will get one, two and three as we were expecting. No error, no pending promises, nothing unexpected. Exactly what we were expecting out of this question. One, two and three. Okay, so let's move on to the question number six. Okay, so here's your question number six. 
we have this promise and we have kept here in promise.resolve and on line 3 you are just using an async function where we have this try block console log and we have kept this promise using a wait in our try block and finally we have a catch and we have a finally block and we have some errors thrown on catch block and some console log statement on finally so what do you think is going to be the answer let me know if you crack this down otherwise we'll continue with this video okay so let's run this we've got hey yeah and then we have got yeah goated so why i've kept this question here is to let you know that whenever you're dealing with async awaits whenever you're dealing with promises always consider exception handling in your code always keep your code in try catch block so that if something uh, happens like your promise fails or something like that you should always get the exact reason why that is happening right so the main intent of keeping that question here was this so now you have kept this in my promise whenever your promise is resolved since you have using await you will uh, see the resolved value which is heya and you got the heya here but your finally block will always run no matter where your execution gets halted like whether you got some error you got into catch block or everything was fine and uh, the try block was fine but no matter what your finally block will always run so you should always keep your code in this scenario while you are dealing with async awaits while you are de dealing with promises i hope this question is clear and the intent of keeping this question here is also clear let's move on to our next question so here's our seventh question which is uh this is this promise actually these type of questions very interests me a lot like what comes after what comes before although this seems complicated but actually they're not they're very interested as per me like i really enjoy solving all these sort of questions uh so we have this promise here we've kept this promise dot resolve and inside that we have another promise dot resolve and we have kept it in promise then we have this function uh, we are resolving this promise here on line 5 we have kept timeout in set timeout and then we have this console statement which is a simple statement uh, for a la function 2 as well since this is an async await uh, we are actually resolving the promise here we are keeping the set timeout and then we are console logging last line on function 2 as well and finally we are calling function 1 and function 2 so pause this video fix this by yourself first it is very interesting question i hope you get this otherwise we'll continue with this question okay so we are calling the function 1 here so what is exactly happening on line 4 is we are resolving the promise using then and you know how then works. So it will keep the code aside and keep keep on running but it will not halt the execution. So it will go to line number 5 which is a set timeout and set timeout also is an asynchronous function. So it will be an asynchronous uh, a call will be sent to the web API and then it will keep on running the code and we will be on the line number 6. So console log last line will be console logged here at the first. So the first thing that logs is last line. And by the time this promise on line number four will get resolved. So you will what you will see, you will see the resolved value, which is a promise here. So on by the second time you will see promise. Now, since we have something else to also run, which is function two, so since uh, so our call stack is not empty yet right so the set timeout whatever the value in there will not be considering that as of now because the call stack isn't empty now so function 2 it will go here it will see okay now this is the promise and you know the await will halt the execution so it will uh, halt the execution till this promise gets resolved and what we get from this result is a resolved value which is a promise so on line 3 you will get promise by from these two lines 10 and 11 on line 12 again it is an asynchronous operation so will not be run now on line 3 you will get last line and you will see last line will get printed out here by using line number 13 and finally now our call stack is empty and now it's time that you can see these things now the 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 the, the things from set timeout will be popped off from the queue and will be in the stack now so this is all concept of event loop 
uh i hope this event loop structure and event loop thing is clear to you but if it is not if you want me to make a detailed video on it then let me know in the comment section i will make a detailed video on event loop how exactly that works in javascript but this whole concepts and the calls and call stack and the queue and stack whatever i'm using is all the concepts related to event loop so here you will see last line and now your stack is empty and once your stack is empty you, the things from the queue will start pop coming into stack and whatever you will see first in the stack it will get printed out so on line number 5 you will see console log timeout and you will see timeout here and finally you will see 12 uh, so the timeout on line number 12 so that will get popped off from the stack and you will see the console log timeout so i hope this question is also clear now we'll move on to our giveaway question so i am posting the question here and we'll let you know who is going to win the giveaway okay so here is your giveaway question so the person who is going to solve this and write a comment down in this video with an explanation that why the answer is what the answer is basically is going to get the surprise gift so this is the motivation for you guys so that you can solve these questions and you understand them with an explanation as well and with this we are coming to the end of this video this is the end of this video i'll see you soon in my next video do hit the like button if you like these questions these are very very interesting questions especially for me i really enjoy solving all these questions and if you want me to make a detailed video on event loop let me know that as well i'll make a video on that as well and that's it thank you so much for watching this video i'll see you soon in my next video thank you so much